Hi, I'm Rob from BNH, and in this video, I get to tell you about an exciting new development here at BNH. We now carry 3D printers from various companies, including 3D Systems, FlashForge, and MakerBot. And we've got a full 3D printing area in our New York City Superstore showcasing MakerBot products. This model here with me today is the MakerBot fifth generation replicator. And via the magic of time lapse photography, we'll see it print up a nut and bolt assembly and a stretchy bracelet during this video. We'll also talk about some of the basics of how 3D printing works and some things you'll want to take into account before you purchase a 3D printer. So how does it work? Well, if you've seen a glue gun working, you know that a solid stick of glue is inserted into the back of the gun and passes through a very hot nozzle, which both melts it into glue and directs it toward the surface you want to target. Well, a 3D printer does the same thing. You feed the material, called filament, into the printer and the nozzle melts it. Instead of you pointing the glue gun, however, the nozzle of your 3D printer is controlled by a very precise motor. That motor is controlled by software, so before you print, you need to give the printer a file containing a three-dimensional design. The software sliced this design into layers as thin as a piece of paper, and now the printer is drawing each layer with melted filament. As each successive layer is added to the one beneath it, a three-dimensional object emerges. Contemporary desktop printers will let you print in two or even three colors. You can use plastic filament like ABS, the stuff Legos are made out of, or PLA, a biodegradable plastic derived from corn, which is what we're using for the bracelet and the nut and bolt assembly. But there are other kinds of materials available, glass, wood, nylon, flexible materials, though not all printers can print with every material. Commercial printers can print with many materials, including metals. But practically, what can you do with your own 3D printer? Well, manufacturers have actually been using this technology for decades to make prototypes. Instead of the costly and time-consuming process of shipping designs and prototypes from engineer to manufacturer and back, inventors can design objects and hold them in their hands that very same day. When corrections or alterations are needed, they can be accomplished on site with very little time and material wasted. Obviously, the applications for architecture and design are self-evident. Schools are quickly becoming the biggest purchasers of 3D printers, using the technology to add a deeper level to traditional teaching practices. Rather than just seeing diagrams of the pyramids, for example, and hearing their teachers or professors explain it, students are now helping to design and label 3D models they can hold in their hands. At home, you can make practical things like electronics accessories, such as the cell phone holder, or household items like dishwasher safe crockery. Make a prototype of that great gadget that will turn you into a millionaire, or have fun. Make custom nameplates, jewelry like the stretchable bracelet, and of course, toys. This three color elephant with moving parts is a single print no assembly required. You can also scan and print almost anything, produce a replica of your baby's first shoes or your wedding cake. This handheld scanner from 3D Systems allows you to scan something as large as almost 10 feet in each dimension. Of course, you'll need to shrink the image before you feed it into your printer. And that, of course, leads us into software. You can design your own 3D model in a variety of programs like CAD or computer-aided design software, for example. Create a model from scratch or from a scanned image or download one of the thousands of 3D files available for free or for purchase on dozens of websites. There's a variety of both free and commercial software programs available which will allow you to build, sculpt, color, position, and prepare your design. One of the important factors you'll consider when preparing your 3D model for printing is the resolution. The resolution measures the thickness of each layer that will be printed, which of course will affect the final appearance of your object. If the layers are thin and fine, your finished object can be detailed, intricate, and smooth. If you choose a rougher resolution, though, the striations created by each layer will be more visible. Resolution greatly affects print time, though. If you choose a fine resolution at, say, 100 microns, the thickness of a piece of paper, your printer will have to lay down three times as many layers as if you'd chosen a 300 micron resolution. This will likely take about three times as long. This castle was printed with the MakerBot 5th generation replicator at a 100 micron resolution and took about five hours to make. This bracelet, on the other hand, took about an hour. 
So you've got your file ready to prepare the printer. You'll probably want to cover the build plate with painter's tape, which will help you remove your finished print without harming the build surface. Turn the printer on and feed your filament into the extruder. It will take a few minutes to warm up to the temperature needed to melt the filament. Most printers calibrate their machinery automatically, but some will require manual alignment by the user. Now your 3D printer is ready to bring your model into the physical world. Send your prepared file to the printer via USB or by inserting a flash drive or SD card directly into the printer. Some models even allow you to send files to the printer via Wi-Fi. Then sit back and watch as your 3D printer melts layer upon layer of filament to build your vision. This fifth generation replicator even has a built-in camera so you can share the creation process with friends over the internet. Now there is a bit of a learning curve to getting consistently accurate results, but with a little bit of practice, this process becomes fairly straightforward. Also, filament is quite affordable, so you can feel good about experimenting away as you become proficient at 3D printing. This bracelet took about 20 to 30 cents worth of filament to make. After you've removed your 3D print, you can sand it down to make it smoother. You can glue several prints together to create a larger piece, and you can paint, drill, or otherwise manipulate your creation. So that's the basics of 3D printing, but how do you choose a 3D printer? Well, there are essentially only two major questions to ask yourself. What size objects do I want to produce, and which materials will I want to use? The first question is relatively straightforward, and to answer the second, you'll basically decide whether you want to print with PLA or ABS plastic. ABS is very strong and mildly flexible, which makes it a good choice for many professional applications. However, it requires a large and well-ventilated area. By contrast, PLA doesn't give off unpleasant fumes during printing, but it melts at a much lower temperature than ABS. All the demo prints that we're seeing in this video were done with PLA filament. And we've got a range of 3D printers at B&H. If you're just starting out as a hobbyist and want to get your feet wet, you might consider the MakerBot Mini, which will fit easily on a spare patch of your desk, but your print volume is limited and the finest resolution is 200 microns. If you want to experiment with simultaneous two-color printing, look at the MakerBot Replicator 2X. Again, this one here is the fifth generation MakerBot replicator, sort of a medium size model. If you're looking for a very large build volume, the MakerBot replicator Z18 may be what you need. It lets you print objects up to a foot in width and depth and up to a foot and a half in height. On the more budget-friendly side are the Solid Doodle and Robo 3D models, while the Cube Pro Trio can print three filaments simultaneously. So yes, it's official, the future has arrived, and personal 3D printers are a reality, and hopefully this video gives you some idea of how it works. And if you're in New York, stop by the B&H Superstore and check out our extensive display of 3D printers in action. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.